This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Whether you need a domain, a website, or an online store, make it with Squarespace. Check out squarespace.com for a free trial. There is a link below. The Black Samurai, despite sounding like a name that would be more at home in a movie or a comic book rather than the real world, is a genuine nickname given to a mysterious man from feudal Japan, otherwise known only as Yasuke. The rank of samurai was, of course, considered one of great prestige, and it came with a number of perks including salary, land, a stipend of rice, servants, and the ability to kill commoners who offended them and not face any consequences. In regards to that last one, Kirisute Goemon, literally author authorization to cut and leave was a right granted to samurai that allowed them to kill anyone of a lower rank, even other samurai of lower rank, for a perceived slight against their honor. While this has very little to do with the story of Yasuke, we couldn't not mention the fact that samurai had the ability to basically murder people without consequence, so long as a given set of restrictions was honored, such as doctors and midwives were exempt to a certain extent, that the blow had to come directly after the affront and not later, a witness to the slight was required for proof of a slight was in fact made, etc. etc. But in the general case, samurai were of such high standing that dishonoring one in front of a witness was a great way to end one's life. Given the highly regarded position samurai enjoyed, it was seldom an honor doled out to foreigners, and as such, there are less than a dozen confirmed examples of a person outside of feudal Japan being allowed to call themselves samurai. Amongst this select group of foreigners, Yusuke not only stands out for being speculated to have been the first, but also because he was the only one who was black. Little is known about Yusuke's past, so little in fact that we know neither where he was born nor his original name. It's mostly agreed that Yusuke held from somewhere in Africa, though which area exactly has never been conclusively established, with Mozambique mentions in most accounts of his life. This is thanks to Histoire Ecclesiastique des Îles et Romans du Japon, written in 1627 by one Francois Solier, where he claims Yusuke was from that region. And my French pronunciation is absolutely terrible. However, it's not clear what his own source for that information was, and he wrote it almost half a century after the last known direct documented evidence of Yasuke. Whatever the case, originally believed to have been a slave captured sometime around the 1570s by the Portuguese, Yasuke was bought by and became the servant of an Italian Jesuit and missionary called Alessandro Valignano. Valignano was famed for his insistence that missionaries to Japan become fluent with the language, requiring a full two years of study in Japanese, which helped his group stand out and be more successful than others. As for Yasuke, he traveled with and served Valignano for several years until the pair made port in Japan around 1579. Upon arriving in Japan, as you might expect, Yasuke immediately became a subject of intrigue and curiosity, both because of his apparently extremely dark skin and his intimidating stature. Variously described as being 6 feet 2 inches tall and 6 feet 5 inches tall, Yasuke towered over the Japanese populace of the period, with males only averaging about 5 feet tall at the time. Beyond his height, he is said to have possessed a powerful, chiseled physique. According to legend, Yasuke's very presence inspired both terror and curiosity in locals to such an extent that several people were supposedly crushed to death in an attempt to make their way through a large crowd that had gathered to see him. Other stories tell of people breaking down the doors of places Yasuke was staying just to catch a glimpse of him. Whether any of this is true or not, sometime in 1581, while visiting Japan's capital, Yasuke came to the attention of a man who is considered one of the people ultimately responsible for the unification of Japan, famed Japanese warlord Oda Nobunaga. Nobunaga apparently insisted on meeting the mysterious dark-skinned stranger who was causing such a commotion in his city. Upon meeting Yasuke, according to an account by Jesuit Louis Freus, Nobunga apparently ordered Yasuke to be roughly scrubbed with brushes to prove that his dark skin was real and not artificially done with ash charcoal or things like that. It is from this first meeting that one of the only known accounts of Yasuke's appearance comes from, with this fateful meeting documented in the Lord Nobunaga Chronicle. On the 23rd of the second month, March the 23rd, 1581, a black page, Kurubozu, 
came from the Christian countries. He looked about 26, 24, or 25 by Western count, or 27 years old. His entire body was black like that of an ox. The man was healthy and good-looking. Moreover, his strength was greater than that of ten men. Nobunaga's nephew gave him a sum of money at this first meeting. Presumably thanks to Valignano requiring missionaries to Japan to learn Japanese, it appears at this point he also required it of Yasuke, as Nobunaga was said to have greatly enjoyed conversing with Yasuke and was intrigued to learn about his homeland. He ended up liking Yasuke so much that he eventually took him as his own, or rather, officially, Valignano gifted him to the warlord. Nobunaga, who was known for his fondness for other cultures, which is in part why he was allowing Christian missionaries to operate in the area, gave his newly found confidant the name Yasuke. Although technically still a slave in the sense that he had to serve Nobunaga, Yasuke quickly rose in stature in the eyes of Nobunaga, with Yasuke ultimately being given a house, salary, and servants of his own. During his rise, he apparently served as Nobunaga's weapon bearer and bodyguard, and was otherwise seemingly treated as an equal by his peers. Yasuke was also eventually given a katana from Nobunaga, apparently conferring the title of samurai upon him, as only samurai were permitted to carry such a weapon at the time. It's also noteworthy that he wore the traditional armor of the samurai when in battle. Yasuke also had the frequent extreme honor of dining with Nobunaga, something few others were allowed to do. Yasuke's time with Nobunaga was cut short, however, when the warlord was betrayed by one of his generals. This general was Akichi Mitsuhide, and it happened a year later, in 1582. In a nutshell, Nobunaga was at the Honoji Temple in Kyoto, taking with him only a contingent of 30 pages and guards. For reasons unknown, though perhaps just a simple power grab, Mitsuhide chose to betray Nobunaga at this point, surrounding the temple and attacking. Yasuke is known to have been there and fought along alongside Nobunaga, but ultimately, when defeat was imminent, as the temple burned around them, Nobunaga chose to commit ritual suicide rather than be captured. Legend has it, whether true or not isn't known, that one of Nobunaga's last acts was to order Yasuke to carry Nobunaga's head and sword to his son and heir, Oda Nobutada. Whether he actually did this or not, it is known Yasuke managed to escape and joined Nobutada, who himself was under attack at the time by a separate contingent of Mitsuhide's soldiers at nearby Nijo Castle. Nobunaga's son was eventually defeated, committed ritual suicide, and Yasuke was captured by Mitsuhide's men. Apparently unsure of what to do with the foreign samurai, or even whether they should consider him a true samurai or not, despite the fact that he wielded the sword and wore the traditional armor, they chose not to kill him, and instead left it to Mitsuhide to tell them what to do. In the end, while there is some contention, it would seem Mitsuhide decided to dishonor Yasuke by not allowing him to commit a ritual suicide, and instead had him return to the Jesuits. Whether Mitsuhide did this out of pity or contempt for Yasuke is a matter of contention, though it is noteworthy that there was little in the way of racism towards black people in Japan at the time, because so few black people ever visited the country anyway. From here, as unlikely as it's going to sound, Yasuke, the giant Japanese-speaking, black, now ronin samurai who supposedly caused crushing crowds wherever he went, disappeared from history, even in the Jesuits' own accounts. This has led some to speculate that he did not stay with the Jesuits, and even some speculation that, if becoming a samurai wasn't enough, that he became a pirate after this, meaning his moniker could have potentially been not just the Black Samurai, but the ultimate in badass nicknames, the Black Pirate Samurai. Though, unfortunately, Unfortunately, there is no hard documented evidence that he actually became a pirate. We're all very disappointed. But speaking of badass things, Squarespace! smooth. Squarespace allows you to create a powerful online identity for whatever you're up to. Maybe you are a samurai pirate and you just need to tell the world, or, you know, maybe you're not. Either way, Squarespace is how you should go about setting up your online presence. It all starts on Squarespace with a beautiful template that come with the requisite cool names like Pursuit, like Royce, you can also start from scratch if you want to, or move over from an existing domain and make everything super easy to manage. And once you've gone through the easy customization process, there are no updates, there are no patches, there's no tech BS that you have to deal with. No one likes any of that stuff. But you know what everyone does like? Squarespace's 24-7 customer support, who are there to help you whenever you've got a question. Look, if you're looking to start a business, pursue a dream, become a samurai pirate, do it with Squarespace. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash brain food to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. 
And let's get into today's bonus fact. Speaking of samurai, when George Lucas was developing the Star Wars movies, he was hugely influenced from the work of Japanese director Akira Kurosawa, among others. A titan of Japanese cinema, Kurosawa himself was heavily influenced by Western literature and movies. Marrying cultures, Kurosawa directed movie remakes of Western classics, including Throne of Blood, Macbeth, and Ran, King Lear. His distinct style, however, incorporated traditional Japanese culture, including tragic ladies, scheming lords, arrogant samurai and lone ronin. These are rogue samurai who could only find work as mercenaries and bodyguards. Among the most dominant of these influences were the period dramas, historical stories with elaborate costumes and sets known as westerns, and in particular the stunning visual work of director John Ford. This imagery he so admired and borrowed included the lonely street of the frontier town, with villagers peeking from behind closed doors, the meeting of two men to fight to the death, and the anti-hero who overcomes incredibly bad odds. In an example of the student becoming the master, Kurosawa began to influence American filmmakers in the 1960s. So much so, in fact, that two of his movies were actually remade for Western audiences. The Seven Samurai as The Magnificent Seven in 1960, and Yojimbo as A Fistful of Dollars in 1965. A favorite among film students, a young George Lucas was a fan of Kurosawa's period dramas, which in Japan are called Jedi Geeky. Get it? Jedi. Among the most influential of Kurosawa's films on Star Wars was 1958's The Hidden Fortress. The premise of the story, as Jesus Diaz notes in his excellent video, was two arguing peasants who help an outlaw princess and a samurai mentor escape the clutches of enemy imperial forces. Which, you know, does sound vaguely familiar. Other Kurosawa influences are also seen, including the resemblance between the imperial armor, think Darth Vader and stormtroopers, and samurai garb. Master Yoda's striking similarity other than in height to the character Kanbei Shimada from Seven Samurai and the famous cantina sequence from Episode 4 and the scene from Yojimbo. And of course, the similarity between lightsaber battles and samurai sword fights. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do smash that thumbs up button below and don't forget to check out our wonderful sponsor Squarespace linked to below. And as always, thank you for watching.